Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. True here from Lone Fox, and today I have 10 really, really great tips and hacks that you're gonna wanna stick around for, because these ones are really inexpensive ways that you could transform your home, your rental project. Whether you are a new homeowner, you've been living in the same home for 25 years now, these are great things that you could do really affordably to just update and elevate the space that you are living in. I'm also currently standing while filming this video, which I have never done before, but if you were to see this living room right now, let me give you a little look. This living room is currently packed. Oh, there's Justin over there. Packed up with furniture because I know this video is inexpensive ways to transform your home, but if you head on over to lonefox.com and check out our vintage furniture section, you could find an expensive way to also transform your home. Basically, I have been selling vintage furniture over on Lone Fox, but I will say since I'm housing the pieces here, I'm sourcing all of them myself, and I only have so much space, I'm kind of finding more specialty pieces, hence I have to sell them for a little bit more. So if you check out the pieces, just note that they are really, really unique pieces that I have sourced, and they're over on the website. You can pick them up in Los Angeles or we ship all over the US. But you can also find vintage pieces on Facebook Marketplace if you'd like. So you do you. And we are going to dive on into our first inexpensive way to elevate your home. Wall molding is probably one of the biggest things I think you can add to a room or a home to transform it completely. And wall molding can consist of baseboards and crown molding, but most specifically, I feel like adding molding directly to the wall can totally transform a space. It kind of gives it more of a historical feel, a bit more classic. It also kind of has a little bit of a French Parisian flair to it. I just love all the possibilities you have with molding. There is no rhyme or reason to it, and there's no precise recipe you kind of have to follow for wall molding. So you can do it in strips, you could do it vertically, you could do box boxes on the wall, you could do boxes with little like inset corners, and if you just get yourself a pair of miter shears and go on down to the hardware store, pick up some simple molding pieces, they are so inexpensive and you can tack them on your wall super affordably, paint over the top and have an instantly transformed room or wall, and honestly probably under $100, which I think is great because the impact that it gives are more expensive than your $100 investment that you made. And I also came across some incredible peel and stick molding, which is just sold on Amazon. I'll pop up some of my favorites here. They have just simple ones and more decorative options. They're actually made of like a foam material. So you put them up on your wall. You can paint over the top of them and they give you the look of a molded wall feature. Something I do with almost every frame that I actually hang up, but I feel like I kind of glaze over in videos and makeovers, is removing the glass from the frame to give the art more of a expensive feel to it, because once there's glass over the top and that glare hits it, I also feel like with gallery walls or just larger pieces of art in general, this is totally more common. So if you notice a glare and it kind of bothers you, by removing the glass, all you have to do is just pop that in the back of your frame. Still keep the glass, always keep it, just pop it on the back side so you could add it back in the future if you wanted to. Hang it back up on the wall, and you have a glare-free piece of art, and I just feel like instantly it looks a lot better. Something I feel like a lot of people look past when they move into a new space are the wall plates that cover your light switches and your outlets. And this is another affordable way to give just a more customized look to a space. So throughout my home, I've actually been using a lot of these wall outlets that I just pick up at Lowe's, and they have a snap on back that you actually screw into the wall, and that's where the screws go, and a front plate that covers all of the screws and just the actual like utilitarian function of the piece. You snap this over the top, and it gives a really clean and sleek look to the light switch cover. But I've also used a bunch of different decorative ones in the past, and here are some of my favorites. I will link these below for you guys. It's also an extremely easy swap. You just need a screwdriver, and it's two screws you undo, and you are good to go. Another more simple thing to just keep in mind when you're painting or if you are going to be painting in the future is to just paint the wall and the trim color the same. I feel like a lot of times now you see baseboards and crown molding just painted white and then the wall is kind of like an off shade. But if you were to go ahead and paint the baseboard the same color as the wall and the same color as the crown molding, if you do have that, it's totally gonna elevate the height of your wall and it's gonna make it look more expensive in the end. I've done this in almost every single room I have made over unless it's like more intentionally adding a contrast trim like I did in my breakfast nook, which is another fun thing that you can do is just intensify the trim color just a little bit more than your wall color and just get kind of a contrast that way. But if you don't really know what to do, I always suggest painting the wall color the same as the trim color and you'll have a beautiful canvas to work with. 
For fifth hack, this is probably one of my favorites in the video. I absolutely love this, and we recently actually did this in the hallway makeover if you watched that video. Great way to elevate the height of your baseboards because baseboards can get costly, especially if you're trying to go in and pull out all your current baseboards and kind of add in newer ones that are taller because I feel like we all know a taller baseboard kind of does look better most of the time. However, a great little kind of tip around this is to just stack your baseboard. So that just means keeping your current shorter baseboard and stacking another one right on top of it to elevate the height. But once you paint it all the same color or whatever you want to go ahead and paint that, it's going to blend in and look like one seamless piece of molding across the bottom. You could also do this on the crown molding. If you just have like a simple piece of crown, you can add a small little piece underneath or on the actual roof itself to kind of just give you a bit more detail. In the hallway, we had a really simple small baseboard and we added just a two inch decorative trim on the top of that, which was super cost effective. I think I paid like $110 for this entire hallway's molding. And when we added it on top, added a few brad nails in and painted it all the same color, it totally transformed this hallway, gave it so much more elevated height at the bottom there and just a little bit more detail. A little styling tip with a particular piece that I instantly feel like kind of makes your home a little bit more museum-esque in a way is just styling with a pedestal. So I actually have one right in the corner over here and it holds a really great bust head that I found at a garage sale. But the pedestal, this one is a marble one, was just from an antique shop. It was like $80 and I will go ahead and link some of my favorite ones that I found online for you guys below that are kind of ranging in price points. I just feel like a pedestal with a piece on top of it feels really special, but it's also a way to fill kind of a random wall, a smaller wall, or even a larger space. I feel like a pedestal and a small piece of decor and like a little piece of art above it is just an easy way to create a really nice vignette on a large area without having to do too much. I'm sure you guys have heard this many times in the past, but swapping out light fixtures is such a great and easy way to transform a space. Even if you are in a rental, I did this throughout my entire last rental and the rental I had before that. Just swap out the light, keep your current ones all in one little area or in the top of a closet or something so that you could swap them back once you leave. Or if you're lazy like myself, you just tell the landlord that you swap the lights for better ones and he could take a look. And most of the times he'll just enjoy those ones more. But light fixtures really do not have to be expensive and Facebook Marketplace can be your best friend for a great light fixture. I have found so many incredible light fixtures on Facebook Marketplace. The one in my dining room, you guys, the iron one was $150. The one in my hallway was $50. I found a super cool one for my manager's office as well that was also $50. And I just think transforming even just the simplest like little boob light or one of those little circle lights you can get at the hardware store for like $20 to something just a little bit more elevated. Vintage lighting, of course, is also super stunning. So if you find something at an antique shop or a thrift store, since we're in the realm of lighting, if you have ever heard of a ceiling medallion, this is another really great affordable way to transform the look of a light fixture. If you have one that's more simple, you could purchase a ceiling medallion, which is essentially like a piece of molding in a circular form that you would just add above your light fixture. They also come split in half, so you can just install them over the top of a light fixture that's already installed. So I'll put some of my favorites up for you guys to look at and link them below for you. But a ceiling medallion, I've used these many times in the past. I haven't got around to actually using a large one, which I would love to do one day. And I also feel like you could totally paint a large ceiling medallion, like a contrast color, and just bring a little more emphasis up to the ceiling, up to the ceiling medallion, and then drop a light from it. I think that could be really fun if done right, you know? But they're not too expensive. You can also find them just at your local hardware store. Just check out the lighting section. You're gonna see a whole bunch of different options and probably find one that you can use in one of the rooms of your home. Choosing a proper rug size can make or break a room. I truly feel like if a rug is too small for a room, you just need to remove the rug all in all because no rug looks better than a rug that is too small. And what I mean by this is just a small rug underneath like just a simple coffee table. It just kind of overall makes the room feel smaller. It's gonna make your coffee table feel smaller. It's probably gonna make your couch look smaller. So the proper rug size can totally enhance a room. And I actually created a little rug size guide that I'll pop up for you guys. And this just shares some of my favorite sizes 
sizes for different types of furniture, different placements of furniture, and different rooms throughout your home. But essentially the rule of thumb is you want at least the front legs of all your furniture to be on top of the rug, if not all of the legs. I feel like in design now it's become a little bit more trendy to have a rug almost wall to wall in a room, but at least if you have like the front legs of the sofa and the front legs of your accent chair on the rug, your coffee table, I feel like you are good to go. But just keep that in mind when you're out shopping for a rug, make sure all your furniture is gonna fit on it and measure beforehand so you are not walking away with the rug too small for your space. This last one here honestly can be free, and that is concealing clutter. Just having clutter out on your surfaces, whether it be your coffee table, your dining table, your kitchen counters, whether it be appliances, or just like random little bits and bobs here and there, having extra clutter out is instantly your eyes directed towards it, and you don't really focus on any of the furniture or the artwork or like what you're actually supposed to focus on in a room or a house. Maybe if you're able to add more storage or easier storage for yourself to be able to put away these items better. That's what I've done actually, we kind of have one large cabinet in the kitchen that we've transformed into our appliance cabinet. The air fryer goes in there, the toaster oven goes in there, everything goes off the counter, which in the end makes it look a little bit prettier. And then we have these pull-out drawers in the kitchen that make those appliances super easy to just access and put back on the counter. Even your nightstands or dresser, just grab a little trinket box or a storage box to pop on top for all those odds and ends as opposed to having them kind of scattered out. So that, my friends, is my 10 ways to elevate your home very inexpensively. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I absolutely love Love sharing videos like this and if you have any other ideas for videos you would like to see along the lines of this or anything relating to home decor or DIY please feel free to leave a comment below I feel like I haven't asked you guys in so long what types of videos you have been wanting to see on the channel I think that's about all but if you'd like more Lone Fox in your life definitely check me out over on Instagram it is Lone Fox home along with my TikTok and you can also check out my shop lonefox.com for all things home decor vintage vintage furniture it's a dresser right there and there's a couch right there so I'm standing. I'm pretty sure I almost passed out in this video because I locked my legs, but I'm good. So yes, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.